Hello! So you've started Neo 2, or maybe you've been playing and are dying too much! Whatever your background, I'm here to outline in greater detail the most significant new systems and mechanics added to Neo 2, as well as offer tips to help you better understand how to utilize them. I also got some general combat tips here to help you get back up to speed. Worth noting, Neo 2 is built on the foundations of the first game, which means its basic systems like weapon stances, armor weight, and key all function the same. I've avoided going too much into detail about those subjects, as they're generally obvious or are explained in the opening tutorial. Take courage, recover key! If you're a veteran of the first game and have noticed that Neo 2's handling of key feels oddly different, it's because adjustments were made to how fast it replenishes, a characteristic you could now impact when you level up. New to the sequel is the courage stat, which affects your character's key recovery speed. It's not enough to spec points into heart anymore. You actually need to split the difference between the two to get your character precisely where you feel comfortable. These are both stats you should invest in right away to improve your odds of survival. Remember the key pulse. Ah yes, the key pulse. Out of all the mechanics from the first game, it's the most critical. The key pulse is a maneuver that allows you to restore some of the key you've expended from attacking or dodging. To perform a key pulse, press R1 the moment light gathers around you after an attack. The more precise your timing, the more key you'll gain back. You'll know you've executed a perfectly timed key pulse when a swirling white energy gathers around your character. It's paramount to use key pulses during a fight, as the extra key it gives you can be a lifesaver when you're cornered, especially against bosses. It's also necessary when purifying yokai realms, which are small areas produced by yokai enemies that enhance their strength and slow your key regeneration rate. A key pulse can instantly extinguish a yokai realm from the field, which becomes even more important inside the dark realm, where yokai realms are even deadlier. More on that later. Don't worry about the new skill trees, spend those points! When you first see the Learn Skills menu in Neo 2, it's easy to get overwhelmed by the sheer number of skill trees available. Don't! Realistically, you're only investing in a few or so trees, so try to take a moment to decide early on which kind of character you want to play to determine which trees you ultimately want to use. Do you want to focus primarily on traditional samurai and katana skills, or would you prefer to focus on onmyo magic and yokai powers? Consider what interests you and which weapons you're most comfortable with in battle, and then start specking your skill points from there. Of course, you're still free to experiment and spec into as many skill trees as you want, but keep in mind, once you start settling on the kind of character you want to be, consider fully respecting your stats and skill points accordingly. You can respec at any time by purchasing the Book of Reincarnation from the blacksmith, who sets up shop at the starting point after the second main mission. It costs 10,000 gold though, so make sure you're 100% willing to take the plunge before resetting. Since you're frequently leveling up and increasing your weapon proficiency early on, you quickly amass quite an abundance of skill points. Check your skill tree often to spend them on foundational abilities within the skill trees of your choice. You should also occasionally dip into your inventory to see if you've found any special locks of hair, which can give you free skill points of varying kinds upon consumption. These are incredibly handy items that can be easy to neglect since you're always picking up and earning so much during your travels. Get Running Water Key Pulse ASAP. Make sure to unlock the Running Water Key Pulse techniques from the Samurai skill tree as soon as possible. This alternate Key Pulse technique allows you to perform one with a precisely timed dodge instead of the traditional method of pressing R1. There are three running water skills in total, one for each weapon stance, so make sure to save up at least six skill points to unlock them in the samurai skill tree. If you're having trouble mastering the traditional key pulse, the running water key pulse can be a great alternate way to reap the benefits of the technique, as the timing to execute correctly is easier. Of course, do your best to master both key pulse techniques, as knowledge of each can make you a far more effective fighter. Let's talk yokai powers. Out of everything, the biggest new addition to combat in Neo 2 is yokai powers, which help give you an offensive edge against the insurmountable threats throughout your journey. As a half yokai human known as a shiftling, you can leverage your supernatural abilities in a couple of ways. The first is through yokai shift, a powerful form you can transform into for a limited time. It's similar to Neo 1's living weapon form, but is greatly expanded. There are three yokai shift forms in total, Brute, Feral, and Phantom. 
Talking about their specific strengths and weaknesses alone warrants its own extensive guide, but until I make one, know that Brute is proficient for those big on inflicting powerful melee damage, Feral is fantastic for scrappy hit-and-run tactics, and Phantom is for more defensive-minded Onmyo magic players. While the abilities of the three yokai shift forms vary subtly, they all share a common skill. Yokai Burst When timed correctly, this technique can interrupt and counter special enemy attacks imbued with red energy, leaving your opponent open to attack. The timing varies with the enemy, but try to execute it just as their attack is about to hit. No sooner, no later. It's also worth noting that the yokai shift form you choose has its own unique yokai burst and timing, so make sure to practice often against the different enemy types. Be mindful that the maneuver consumes anima energy, which is the purple gauge below your key, so avoid unnecessarily spamming it. Regardless, yokai burst is a significant pillar of Neo 2's combat and can quickly turn the tide of a difficult encounter when used intelligently. Soul Cores 101. Aside from Yokai Shift, your Yokai powers also manifest in Soul Cores. Special items collected from bosses and powerful enemy Yokai, Soul Cores grant you powerful attack abilities. You can equip up to two at a time so long as you have enough capacity to attune it to your Guardian Spirit. Each has a unique attack. For example, the Enki Soul Core quickly turns you into that monkey Yokai as you throw a spirit at an enemy. Soul cores consume anima energy when performed, so try to be smart about when you choose to unleash them in battle. When you obtain a soul core, prioritize returning to a nearby shrine to purify it, as you lose any in your possession if you die and fail to retrieve your guardian spirit grave. It's possible to collect multiple soul cores of the same type, which you can fuse at a shrine to increase the potency of its special effects. Like most things in Neo 2, it's always good to consolidate, so make sure to use Soul Fusion to improve your Soul Core power. Otherwise, you can use the Resting Rites option to dispose of any unwanted duplicates cluttering your inventory. The Training Ground If you're finding yourself getting wrecked more often than not, there's a practice space called the Training Ground. You can access it via the starting point on the world map by selecting Dojo and then choosing the Training Ground option. Here, you can comfortably test your weapons against a handful of enemy types, as well as spend time getting a handle on your yokai shift and spirit core abilities. It's a lovely place to get your bearings, but don't rely on it! Missions have far more diverse enemies to test your metal against, after all. The Dark Realm A new burden you'll face in Neo 2 is Dark Realms. Imagine an area of a map that's just all yokai realm. That's how Dark Realms are. You need to exercise caution whenever you enter a Dark Realm. Yokai attacks are more powerful, and your key regeneration takes a massive hit here, and any shrines you find are also inaccessible until the area is purified. To exorcise a Dark Realm, you need to defeat the main yokai haunting the area. You just need to be extra diligent in the Dark Realm, and that means performing consistent key pulses, and knowing when to keep your distance from powerful enemies to give yourself enough time to replenish your key. Don't rush! Luckily, your anima replenishes faster in the Dark Realm, so don't forget to lean on your yokai abilities when your key is low. Be careful and patient, and you should rid that area of all that debilitating demonic musk in no time. If you're willing to cheese it, it's a sound strategy to find more powerful yokai, have them follow you just outside the Dark Realm, and then kill them near the entrance. Only do so before they have a chance to teleport back! Though you're welcome to rinse and repeat, as their health doesn't fully replenish upon returning. Do not choose the Bird Guardian Spirit. At the start, you're given the choice of a Guardian Spirit, which, as mentioned, dictates the yokai form of your character. You're free to choose whichever, but I highly recommend not picking the Bird Guardian Spirit, Ame no Mitori, which turns you into a feral form. Since the Guardian Spirit you earn for beating the first boss is Masaru the Monkey, which can also turn into a feral form. So if you want to have more yokai shift form options to play with early on, I suggest choosing either Makami the Wolf or Kagawani the Shark. Benevolent Graves and Friends 
As you explore Sengoku-era Japan, you'll discover benevolent graves, which hold the spirits of helpful AI-controlled allies. They're similar to the hostile Revenant summons, but instead of trying to murder you, they follow you and provide support in combat. But their services don't come for free. You need to expend an item called Ultrical Cups, which you can typically find on dead bodies or get them from defeating Revenants. It's also worth noting that this item is used to summon real-life players at a shrine, of which you can now have up to two join you. So try to be smart about when to spend them to call upon the help of a benevolent grave spirit. Depending on the challenge, you might be better off with the support of a friend. Either way, never let pride get in the way of leaning on benevolent graves, especially in a pinch, as they can easily throw off enemy aggression should you need the time to breathe or flee. They're in the game for a reason. Use those tools! Spend your Agyo and Ungyo prestige points. Like the first game, Neo2 has an internal achievement system called Titles, which allows you to earn additional stat bonuses. There are two achievement lists in total, Agyo and Ungyo. Each contains several challenges with distinct conditions. For example, the Dual Swordsman Ungyo title requires you to defeat 30 human enemies with the Dual Swords. Each title's list is hidden at first, so it helps to diversify the attacks you use to increase your chances of earning a new title. And upon getting that title, you'll receive reputation points. And once you've accumulated enough of those, you'll gain a prestige point, which you can use to acquire a stat bonus in the prestige summary screen. Check your titles often, so you can further strengthen your character. Amrita Memories if you're still feeling confused about the copious tutorials thrown at you early on, you can find comfort knowing that the Amrita memory section of the pause screen condenses and consolidates much of the essential information around the game's mechanics for your reference. You're free to consult its entries for further clarifications on anything that might have perplexed you. Give yourself time to thoroughly study them, because chances are you probably skip past more of those tutorial screens than you should have. Anyway, got any more important Neo 2 tips or questions about the game in general? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching.